Okay, I hereby call to order the October 28th, 2024 meeting of the Town of Hanson Planning Board at 6, 6.32 p.m. I would also like to announce for any, all those in attendance that this meeting is being recorded for distribution on Whitman Hanson Community Access. Playback times and other related information on this recording can be found at whca.tv. Uh, first thing on the agenda this evening, we have approval of the September 23rd, 2024 open session public meeting minutes. Does everyone, everyone have a chance to look at that? Uh, oh, in, in, in attendance this evening, we have myself, Kevin Cullen, Don Ellis, Paul Beninato. Uh, absent the, this evening is Joe Campbell, and John Kemet is on his way. Uh, Let me make a motion to pass over the minutes until the next meeting. Okay, we have a motion to pass over the minutes. So moved. And second, to pass all for one. Okay, and I agree to pass over the minutes as well. So uh, three zero two. I'm passing over the minutes to the end of the meeting. To the end of the meeting or to the next meeting? Yeah. End, of the, end of the meeting or next meeting? You want to? I'm, I'm actually meeting. Okay. So November the 25th would be the next scheduled meeting. All right, passing over the meeting minutes to the next meeting. So tentatively November 25th. All right. Um, so we have a public hearing, 630, 35. Uh, I'm going to read. Oh, uh, no. Don't read it yet. Don't read it yet? Okay. Yeah. Um, you want to wait until yeah we're, go we're waiting until mr kemet arrives the reason is mr ellis is also on the park committee so he can't sit on both committees so considering that the park committee is having this presentation for the planning board technically he has to recuse himself so he'll have to sit in the audience that being the case we'll, we would no longer have a quorum uh, it's a five member board they need to have three members present for a quorum so we're waiting for mr kemet to arrive once he arrives then we can, can open up the public hearing so if you just bear with us. We can uh, also go out of order. We can. Uh, well, we have a 7.15. Well, that's at 7.15, yeah. So we can yeah. keep the, we do your minutes. Uh, We've done the minutes. You could take a, a recess until Mr. Kemet arrives. Yeah, so. If you uh, can call for a recess. Yeah, I'll call for a recess. Do you need a vote on that? Uh, well. All in favor of a recess for until John gets here? Right. Yes. OK. Uh, so, brief recess. All right, welcome back. Uh, the time now being uh, 6.40. Uh, we have a public hearing. Can you read the public re uh, hearing? I can read that for you. Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, Tony, uh, town planner. Let's put that up. In accordance with the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 41, Section 81D through 81H, and the Hanson Subdivision Rules and Regulations, the Town of Hanson Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Monday, October 28, 2024, at 6.35 p.m. at the Hanson Town Hall in the Select Board Meeting Room located on the lower level, 542 Liberty Street, Hanson, Mass. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application for the proposed public park to be known as quote, High Street Park, working title, end quote, submitted by the applicant being the High Street Park Committee, located at 542 Liberty Street in Hanson, the owners of the property of the town of Hanson, again, 542 Liberty Street in Hanson, plans were prepared by land planning, dated September 26, 2023. High Street Park consists of approximately 32.1 acres of land located on the easterly side of High Street and is shown on the town of Hanson Assessor's map 49, Lots 1 and 1A-1. The Planning Board seeks public input relative to this proposed project. The applicants, their representatives, and any other persons desiring to be heard should appear at the time and place designated for the public hearing. Plans and accompanying documents are on file in the Town Planning Office, second floor, Hanson Town Hall, and can be reviewed by appointment. Hanson Planning Board, Joseph Campbell, Chairman, this was advertised in the Whitman Hanson Express on October on Thursday, October 10th, 2024, and Thursday, October 17th, 2024, 
and 64 abutters were notified uh, along with the surrounding communities. Uh, Acting Chair, uh, and, Mr. Cohen. And as a uh, point of order, we do have uh, Mr. Kemet in our presence as well. And yeah, I'm going to recuse yeah. myself. Right? And Mr. Ellis is recusing himself. We'll give him a moment. So, um, I don't know if Mr. Ellis wants to make a presentation or a short presentation regarding the the park and its history and where we how we came to this point, and then there's plans on the screen that I can go through once he's completed. Yeah. Oh, wasn't it? He got a mayor with me. I wasn't expected to do this. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, well, the, the history on it is that. Uh, it's a brief history. Okay. Well, it was asked of us by the selectmen to have a committee to. We look at the Hill County Hospital land. I feel like I'm odd here. Um, I'll turn on this way. Back to the audience. Um, was asked to ask the committee to form the committee to to do something with the hospital land. Um, to make it kind of quick is the fact that this has been going on for probably five years now. Eight. Eight is it? And a half. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we looked at several things. So they had to redo the hospital itself, and then they tore the building down. So then we didn't do that. But we looked at uh, affordable housing. We looked at uh, uh, elderly housing. Uh, there's no money in the state at that time, and I still don't think there is any to, to put that type of thing up there. So we looked at a lot. And um, we looked at selling it to a uh, developer, and they looked at it, and they didn't want to uh, for various reasons. Uh, I'm not privy to why, but usually they just say, well, we're not interested. You know, they move on. I think probably it's because it's a tough area to correct up there. Uh, also, land it has got some clay, uh, heavy depth of clay, so. So anyway, in a short, we decided to do a park, and the selectman said that would be good, so we moved forward with that. Everything that the committee does is with the blessing of the uh, select board. I've got to remember to say that. Right? <laughs> and uh, so uh, the committee was formed. Um, we looked at everything else, like I said, and then we went forward with that, and this is uh, what we came up with and voted on, and at this point, it's been accepted. All of our moves have gone through the selectmen, and they either say yes or no, so they've given us agreement to go forward, and they looked at the plans, and recently, and this is the final plan, and they changed it from, uh, the, uh, to, this is the uh, final, it was originally final, committee and then they changed it to the High Street Park Committee because obviously they want a park and that's what went on up there. Ten so this is the, the uh, part of the park that's been approved by the selectmen mm -hmm. and through the uh, town planner and, and so on. So this is where we stand to today. Um, we have area for parking. We to, to, to have a park to get grants, you need at least 125 parking spaces uh, to get the most money that you can to, to be able to develop it. Um, we had we had a lot of uh, meetings with people at the schools. Uh, I think it was a few years ago, and we went through that. We've had other people come in to design stuff. Uh, you know, we didn't like what they designed. You know, I do remember my name and so the companies, but uh, so we rejected that and came up and 
designed the patch or what we thought was, was working best. So, we so this is the, what we have now. Um, we have an area for a children's uh, playground, uh, tennis courts way up on the left there. Um, on, on your grants, you have to have um, uh, ADA compliant, so it all has to be together. Used to be segregated for different areas, but they've changed that. They want everything in the same area so that they don't feel, you know, handicapped. So I don't know what they call it. I'll go in by themselves. Um, the uh, teenage years, uh, they figured that the state figures that it should be something like a, a basketball court. So the basketball court will be next to it. Uh, and then the playground area and the parking in that area. And so that's pretty much that. Additional parking is down here. Uh, there's a, like a bandstand, uh, they call it something else. Um, An event pavilion. Is it? An event pavilion. Yeah, so, thank you. So, um, yep. you want Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Don, would you like me? Would you like me to present the plans? Would you like me to present the plans? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for bailing me out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's good at this. So, uh, so he gets the big box <laughs> So to, so that folks in the audience can understand, uh, let's say the orientation of the park. So um, this is here's High Street. Here is the uh, Bonnie House. And the two buildings you see out front here, uh, one is are the two remaining buildings of the former Plymouth County Hospital. They were known as the nurses' quarters. Uh, the back building has houses the uh, Hanson Food Pantry and the uh, Plymouth County Beekeepers. And the building out front is currently vacant. Um, so the way the committee, through their design engineer, determined uh, the layout. Uh, down in this area here, you can uh, picture the main entrance to the hospital where you have the stone gate. That'll be an emergency access. So the main entrance will be adjacent to the nurses' quarters. You'll have a uh, roundabout uh, parking, and adjacent to that parking would be the children's playground and a basketball court, and then to the, call it the south, will be a, a, a additional parking that would be used for uh, any other events that may take place. They have proposed a pavilion in an area for, let's say, uh, outdoor shows. And I'm not talking about uh, outdoor concerts or anything like that. This is, if they had anything, it'd probably be like acoustic. Um, and there's an area that's designated as a dog park. Now, obviously, this project is a large project it's an expensive project and it's more than likely a project that Hanson will phase so it's the type of project that will take time um, so the committee had um, retained the services of land planning they came up with the design for the parking the drainage uh, there's a proposed um, area here Let me just blow this up just so everyone can get a good look. So these are the two existing buildings out front. You'll have what we'll call a double barrel uh, entrance and exit. Your basketball court, your children's play area, your parking. Um, trails that will connect to, is that part of the base circuit trail? No, now the base circuit trail comes to the perimeter, but these would be a network of trails and walking pathways for park visitors. Um, there'll be a area here of selectively, what would they call selectively cleared woods. If you can picture the old fireplace that's out there that's standing on its own, that's here. And if you can picture the large Norway spruce, which is in the field, that would be here. Uh, down at the bottom of the hill is where the drainage is proposed. Uh, the design engineer has based his drainage on the current regulations. Um, along the existing homes on High Street, 
there's proposed planting and screening and fencing to minimize any impacts to those abutters. Um, the planning board did request that the committee um, with any, just as any other project, uh, this went out for a peer review. We did receive a review today. Uh, so I just received it today. Uh, and they reviewed the drainage and uh, some of the parking items. So they've come up with a little bit of a punch list and it's something that um, will go to the committee. They'll speak with their design engineer and have that uh, those issues addressed uh, before the planning board makes any type of decision. So uh, that's pretty much the project, uh, I'm gonna say in a nutshell at this point. Does the board have any questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, anyone from the audience have any questions or comments about the plan? If I might, if I may, Mr. Chief. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, if you just state your name and just state your name and address, if you could, please. Okay, you, sir. Mike Dolan, I'm two Main Street, and I live on, uh, in Down Farms. Has the fire department approved any additional watering, water supply or address any supply issues? Because okay. uh, <clears throat> there are no there are no fire hydrants on on Pierce Street. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Uh, right in the middle of the road, uh, middle of the street, um, in front of uh, this community. Okay. And there's one also down at the uh, right at the corner between Robinson and Pierce. If you can see your name for the record. Uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> My name is thirty five Pierce Ave. My name's Alan Spear. I'm at 159 Pierce. Okay, thank you. And John, yeah. 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 Yeah.
to the town put in a, a, a grants to see how much money we can get oh, for so. the project. They don't fund it 100%, so we're going to have to come up with some money too. So this might not get all done at once. It might come in, uh, in phases, depending on what we can get for money. Okay. Nothing's been said. And I had a second question, and it's more of a concern. Uh, our, the dog park, uh, it just seems to me that a dog park is something that sounds great, and then there are a lot of liability issues. And I, I mean, I've had a number of friends who took dogs to dog parks, and the dog got attacked, and you, you know, so has this all been carefully thought out? and having it right next to the playground. No, this is away from the playground. Oh, okay. So, uh, I apologize. If you don't mind, I'll yeah, go ahead. I can't see the thing until I get my camera. Sorry, sorry. Well, that's, that's all right. But the, the, the dark part, usually, the, all the ones that I've seen, and I, I've looked at a lot of them up in Quincy and different you know, cities and towns and Kingston and even one in Abington by the railroad tracks and stuff like that. Um, then the, the music isn't a problem. Um, I haven't had anybody tell me that, but of course I haven't walked, knocked on a bunch of doors and asked them. Mm -hmm. you, you know, but you bring your dog up there, it's up to you, and it's probably signs there that says use this as your own responsibility and stuff. But when I've been there and seen dogs, they seem to run and play with each other. So on. And they usually they have two different uh, uh, areas, one for little dogs and one for the big dogs and, and then some for the old elderly dogs or something that they don't want a rough house, I guess, you know, it, it just depends. We haven't finalized that, we just put an area for that and we can move it one way or the other. We can go, there's enough land area to go out into this area <coughs> so if we need to move the, the training area we can go up into that area there's an awful lot of land up there that's good but we don't want to you know pack it up with everything and this is a big field out there <coughs> the what's the, the grant that was applied for the dog park park specifically yes yes there are grants out there that most of them that, that there's people who take care of the whole thing they won't you know, you don't have to put anything up. They'll put the money up. They'll, they'll uh, you know, set it up. Okay, I want to add to that because yeah. I'm also on the um, park committee. Your name, please. My name is Kathy Gernhardt, 66 Bonnie Hill Hanson. Um, uh, the dog park is one of the last projects, so we have time to uh, absorb more information and do more research and possibly move it or you know get more community input and, and really clean this out a lot better so there's there is it is one of the last phases so there'll be times that um, maybe identify a better location potentially if it's not going to be in this particular park she is a number <laughs> <laughs> of Thank the you. committee oh yeah that's not very <laughs> Uh, Mr. Uh, Bill Clemens, 46 Main Street. For the first eight years, I was on that committee, and for reasons I think it was misunderstanding, it was not reappointed this past uh, June. Uh, I think they thought because it got on conservation out, but I was on this committee as an as a as a uh, member at large. Be that as it may, uh, I'll be applying in case there's any openings to get back on it. But right now, speaking as a member of the public, uh, there's. And people can see there's many elements to this, and I think the important things have been said about, yes, it will cost, it's likely to be phased, et cetera. There are grant opportunities. I know that uh, the, the Division of Conservation Services is a source of grants uh, for what they call the PARCs, or P-A-R-C, or some sort of acronym. And for that, though, we need to uh, renew the town's open space and recreation plan, which expired this past April. I know the town planner and others are working to, towards that. But with that eventually back in place and approved, hopefully we would regain that eligibility for uh, some grants along these lines. And also, as has been said, there is an independent private organization that exists only to fund dog parks. And uh, we, we are well aware of their uh, purpose now to contact them. Probably run by the Rockweilers. Well, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking it's not that. It's, 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 you could actually Google it and probably find it. 
But uh, to me, it seems like uh, enough infrastructure has been proposed here, call it a draft plan, that we felt uh, we, as if I was still on the committee, it was felt that it's time to formally present to the planning board. So instead of being just a concept, it actually is a project with a life. And going forward, whether outside consultants or engineers or others might tweak it a little bit more, or whether we re-examine the dog park thing, because honestly, in my opinion, that's the uh, one of the lower priorities. Uh, there are families in town who have been thirsting for an entire generation to have a, a playground here, something other than in schools. In the schools, you're not going to go to the middle of the school day with your grandchildren. Uh, this will be open. Uh, uh, probably dawn to dusk, uh, uh, 365 days a year when it's permitting. And the, uh, the contribution that the Conservation Commission made to it was to, in cooperation with the select board and, and, the, and the park committee, uh, put in what we call the park perimeter trail, which is, has that park near on me, on uh, his out. And that has served, I think, to get people more familiar with the overall property and the potential that it has. So I hope, I hope personally that uh, in my lifetime, uh, this will not only go forward, but actually come to be a real thing. And uh, it's within walking distance, you know, maybe it's passing the sidewalk in the Tyra, but walking distance of the train station, and that should increase our eligibility for grants. Uh, the point is, a lot of thought has gone into it, and it was felt it was time to roll it out now. And just as a member of the public, I'm glad to see it. One, one other thing I'd like to mention, <laughs> as far as the money goes to, the CPC has some money for us also that they've been holding, I believe. Uh, I haven't spoken to them recently, but, you know, to help do this. And then if there anything that we can get to be able to raise some money for the market, uh, for the park, too, would help. So, I spoke to the uh, gentleman at the uh, school over in Hanover, the uh, uh, Tech, and they're willing to make benches and, and picnic areas with the boot over them for different areas that people can come out and cook stuff and have a day there and kids can go to the park uh, and the open field for frisbees or whatever else. You know, people would like to do. So there's a, there's a lot to this, and it's taken a long time, really. Mm -hmm. I know. Mr. Chair, right. yeah. one other comment. Uh, another part of the envisioning process has been that uh, going forward, when this becomes more real, perhaps there could be a group formed of friends of the Hanson Park, friends of the High Street Park. I believe the Whitman Town Park has friends of the, of the Whitman Town Park. And that could be, could be a mechanism by which both financial donations and volunteer assisting with the management of whatever is needed. Uh, it's, uh, it could be uh, a way to facilitate both the park uh, having a, a, a good existence and uh, minimizing uh, cost to the taxpayer. So uh, that's among the, the hopes that we have talked about. Thank you. Right. There's another question. One more uh, question. I just, uh, yeah. He's getting in for the record. Yeah, Nick Pompey, I live 176 High Street. Um, being that the dog park uh, is the one element that can be moved in, as you said, there's space available, why isn't that moved away from residences? I mean, it is really quite close to our backyard and my neighbor's backyard, and we do fear for the noise and the smell, they do smell. Um, I feel like that's something that, considering all the space that is available, it could be moved somewhere else easily. Yeah, we can, we can move it. Yeah. Uh, that will have to come, that is one of the last things yeah. in, in the park that we'll deal with at this point. You know, the, the money thing is to determine everything, basically. Gotcha. Uh, the park a lot has to be there because that's the area that they designed it to, uh, you know, to come up with 125 parking spaces and the spaces around the uh, other part, uh, the playground area too, so. 
Yeah, I don't dispute the, the parking area. I understand it's a requirement in order to access those funds, but I just strongly feel that that dog park could be moved somewhere else. Yeah, we appreciate your comments. Uh, uh, yeah. Ed Hill, uh, 116 Pine Grove Ave. You mentioned a few times that you might do this in phases. Um, is the top left area kind of a, what may be phase one, or do you have an idea what phase one might be? Don, do you have a look at that? Yes, it would be. Uh, Mr. Chair, right. I might. Uh, yep, go ahead. Is there, is there a Paul Matos in the audience yeah. tonight? You're Paul Matos? Yeah. Okay. This is a gentleman from Allen and Mages. Would you like to speak to the review letter? You can. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> right. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Paul Matos, my Allen and Major Associates. We're done fair review consultant for the town. The uh, Panty Planning Boards. We did review on stormwater and also on some uh, site elements here as it relates to parking, dry miles, etc. So we came up with a few comments here. So the letter uh, details about 25 comments altogether. Uh, we started off going through the drainage calculations. There's some minor revisions that need to occur to bring the project up into compliance with stormwater handbook. Uh, just minor things. It's not that critical. I, I, you know, I, I think the project's going to function as, as it's designed. The stormwater basin in the back just needs to be expanded a little bit. To provide the, the appropriate access that you're supposed to have around the penetration basin. You're supposed to have a 15 foot access road in, in Lockstown right now, it only has an 8 foot wide berm. So that's going to be one of the critical things to expand the infiltration basin to make it a little bit bigger to comply with regulations. I understand the time to get the EPW is probably going to be required to maintain the basin. So if they're uh, adequate with providing access to one side of the basin, We'll be open for discussions on that, something like that, and that, that would be fine with us. But again, I know the town is going to re, uh, be required to maintain it. So, uh, other things that are required uh, infiltration basin is supposed to have one foot of freeboard. Right now, it only has about eight inches of freeboard. So, we'll have to raise the berms a little bit more to provide that one foot of freeboard, or with the expansion of the basin, make it a wider laterally to keep the water down and, and that one foot of freeboard make it wide. And that's all calculations that need to be provided to uh, accommodate that. Uh, as it relates to parking, if you pan down to the angle parking, uh, the town of Hanson's bylaw requires, uh, if you have 60 degree parking, the dry mile is supposed to be 18 feet wide. Our plans currently show only a 16 foot wide dry mile. So again, either the planning board would have to grant a waiver to allow a 16 foot wide dry mile, or the parking lot would have to be expanded two feet on either side to get to 18 feet that's required for the bylaw. Uh, another thing that we had to comment on was the loading space that's uh, in the back there. Uh, you know, you know, like, they have a 43 foot wide loading space there, but they have two parking spaces directly opposite that loading zone. And I think that may be a, a conflict when somebody parked there in a, a loading truck there, unloading stuff, that those two cars will will not have access to get out of the, those spaces until that loading truck moves. So that's a comment that we have identified to be looked at and to be potentially reviewed and maybe modified. Uh, bylaw also talks about some plantings that are required for parking areas of 15 cars or more. I think the plants do not provide you adequate uh, plantings that are required by the bylaw. And then uh, and I think there's probably some ample opportunity to increase the bench standing buffer to these uh, abutters on High Street. Uh, we can move those benches to the other side, and and there's not much grading happening there, so we could probably fattening up that natural vegetative buffer to the butters for the, to the what? So other than that, other than we talked about, you know, the fire department should review the plants and then uh, they should provide a swept path analysis for emergency vehicles getting in and out of the site to make sure they're capable of doing that without interfering with uh, parked cars or curb lines, stuff like that. We also asked them to uh, Calculate the site distances required at the driveway entrances to make sure we have adequate stop site distances. 
and uh, putting some stop signs at the entrance and exits leaving the site, because right now there's no stop signs there. Can I ask a question, please, Mr. Chen? Yep, go right ahead, John. Um, if the dog park was to be moved, right, how would that affect stormwater management calculations as, as written at this point? So, I mean, we're going to, at some point, we're going to codify this plan, right? <laughs> so then later on, someone's going to move the dog park. What's the implication to that, to this plan? It, it all depends on which direction you're going. I believe the watershed line now, uh, if, if the dog park is going to be in action, it's, it's going to be on uh, mulch or some kind of grass area, so it's not really going to affect uh, the watershed too much. It's not like you're putting a, a new parking lot there where if it's pavement, pavement would have a tremendous amount of increase in runoff that you would have to account for. So if they move the dog park to an area that's already cleared, it's not going to have an effect. If you're clearing more trees, the to move the dog park, that may have a, a, a small effect on your drainage system. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Go right ahead, Pam. I'm uh, Kathy Bernhardt, 66 Bonnie Hill. Um, I have a question for you, this is theoretically. If we had a semi permeable pavement surface, yep. um, so some of us on the committee um, would like to entertain the idea of having a different location for the drainage bed. Um, bed. And um, someone we had talked to said that the, with so much parking lot and it being um, impermeable, we had, we were requiring such a large, there's so much drainage coming off that, and there might be a way to do this in a more ecologically friendly way, and also a cheaper way where it wouldn't be so far away. Mm -hmm. and, um, can you give us some thoughts on that? If you, could, if you want to decide, Design the parking lot instead of being paved, you could do uh, pavers that have uh, voids in it so the water would infiltrate right into the pavers. But then you need to design a reservoir below it to make sure it can accommodate the so called 100 year salt. Mm -hmm. So, depending on the size of it, infiltration here is not. I know the infiltration on the back is, is, is pretty good. It's like they're using 2.4 inches an hour. So, that's relatively a pretty good sandy material. But if you have uh, Works the turbine up on this side, and maybe that's the reason why you put the drainage system on there. That's where the good stuff was. And up on this side, the material is going to be tighter and probably a lesser infiltration rate, so your drainage system becomes bigger. So I'm wondering, my, the thought I have is if we, so there's the cost of materials being greater when you have these specialty materials for, for permeable paving and, and maintenance, all that, but the cost of getting piping down there and all of that, that's not cheap either. Correct. So if, yeah. Can I add to that for a second? Mm -hmm. I think I know I know where you're going on with this, mm -hmm. but the truth of it is, I think uh, Dawn and Phil can probably talk to this, is uh, there was a plan for a, a whole uh, complex down there, and soil analysis was done. And I think a lot of this design and the way that stormwater in the back it is, is related to that, because there's a vein of, um, what do you call it, um, clay up in that area. I don't know where it is. I don't know a lot about it, but I do know that that probably could have some effect on the way that that was all designed. So, yes, I, I may add to that. Yep. Sure. So high, high Street runs on what's known as a drumlin. So it's a high, it's a high spot. That's why it's called High Street. And so you would go as Mr. Kemet likes to say, if you go in the way back machine because of the ice age and all that. So as so now what's left is a drumlin. So everything that was good on the top is down at the bottom. So the top of that in High Street, you're gonna find, I believe, almost D class soils which you cannot put infiltration in. So all the good soils are at the bottom and that's where the why the detention basin is where it is, because that's where the good soils are. Mm -hmm. Either on the sides or at the bottom. So that's and obviously the natural thing is you're up high drainage down low but the soils were best where they have that basin uh, they had done they had done a lot and i'm reading through the history they had done a lot of test pits and that area had the best soils for the for the basin itself and what couldn't it could also be true that um you don't want water going toward all the residents that are already there so I think part of the plan is to make sure it all goes that way. Right. So, yeah. yeah. That's all I have to say. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt. John, quick question. Uh, what Tony was saying is true. Uh, 
the, all around the walk base of, of High Street, all the way down to the cemetery. Uh, it's all gravel in the cemetery and the sand all around. I've done I built two or three houses up in that area, and it, it's sugar sand. It's unbelievable, but it, it washed it over, and it's where. Where that is, is going is the same situation that came down into that area. So you have to go with what you got. Okay. And Mr. Coleman? Uh, from the beginning, um, I was, uh, I've had a, a lot of questions about the stormwater management. I know the regulations are there and they have a good reason. And that the soils are where they are, thanks to geology and gravity and all that. Uh, I. Having laid out and overseen the construction of the perimeter trail, uh, I was conflicted between that and the beautiful mature forest, which is down there, and the location for stormwater thing. It may be there will have to be compromise between uh, where the trail is now, where it would go in the future. It might have to migrate closer to the toe of the slope or something like that. But uh, I shared uh, Ms. Gernhardt's question that uh, making sure that we have in a thorough way, rather than jumping to a quick conclusion, explored the possibility for the greenest possible sort of stormwater compliance that we can with the least uh, disruption to the uh, to the ecosystems that are there now. Uh, I trust that uh, this has been looked at carefully, but I don't know uh, if every other square foot of, of the site for example, uh, further to the right, as we look at it there, there's a place where uh, right now there's a, a little bit of a hollow. Uh, if you uh, move it, see, if you go see the contour lines start to go straight up and down to the left, Tony, uh, right there. Uh, I don't know if we look at the soils there, and it seems to me, just in a general sense, that was a very large stormwater system for the project. And uh, maybe it, maybe it has, as Alan Major can say, maybe it has to be that size. I just have not seen numbers, and aesthetically, would hate to lose all those woods. But um, this is still on paper, so I hope you <coughs> will just be open minded as we go forward. All right. All right, thank you, Mr. Clemens. Uh, so we're looking to close the public hearing. Nope, continue. Oh, continue. Sorry, continue the public hearing to. Tentatively November 25th, yes, uh, 2024. Um, all those in favor of continuing it to 2024, so move. So move. Second. Yep. All in favor. Three zero. Uh, oh yeah, three zero two. And um, <clears throat> okay. Fine, me, Mr. Chair. Yep. Go right ahead. So what we've done tonight is continued the public hearing to November the 25th. Uh, our meetings start at 6.30. Uh, our agendas are posted on the town's website. Uh, we'll probably be meeting here. This room is available. So if any of the, mem if any of the members of the public would like to come, uh, you're welcome to come back. The sign-in sheet, if you filled it out, if you want to leave an email address, uh, if you're willing to share an email address, we can notify you by email of the meeting as well. Uh, so what will happen now is um, the review that was done by Alan and Majors will go to the committee and then they'll have it over to their design engineer and then they'll need some time to review it. Uh, I don't know if they'll have enough time to address all the issues that were raised by the 25th of uh, November. Um, so they may need a little more time, but that's at least a working date that we'll go with right now. We appreciate all the comments and thanks for coming to that portion of our planning board meeting. Uh, moving on, <clears throat> we have a seven o'clock hearing. The time now, can't even see it up there. Seven twenty. <clears throat> the purpose of the hearing is to review the plans for proposed pedestrian improvements along Main Street from High Street to Elm Street. I can read the uh, public hearing notice for that, Mr. Chair. Uh, You're more than welcome to stay. Anyone's more than welcome to stay for the next hearing, or if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. It, um, and at the point of order, uh, Don has uh, returned. Thank you. Okay. And Give me one second, Mr. Chair. And 
Okay, so I'm going to read the public hearing notice. In accordance with the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 41, Section 81C, 81D, and 81G through H, and Enhanced Subdivision Rules and Regulations, the Town of Hanson Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Monday, October 28, 2024, at 7 p.m. at the Hanson Town Hall in the Select Board Meeting Room located on the lower level, 542 Liberty Street, Hanson, Mass. The purpose of the hearing is to review the plans for proposed pedestrian improvements on Main Street from High Street to Elm Street. The Town of Hanson received a grant in 2023 for pedestrian improvements along Main Street. The project consists of replacing existing, existing deficient sidewalks and construction of new sidewalks to provide a safe pedestrian corridor along Main Street. The project will construct approximately 4,000 linear feet of sidewalk from High Street to Elm Street. The Planning Board seeks public input relative to this proposed project. The applicants, their representatives, and any other persons desiring to be heard should appear at the place at, at the time and place designated for the public hearing. Plans and accompanying documents are on file in the Town Planning Office, second floor, Hanson Town Hall, and can be reviewed by appointment. Hanson Planning Board, Joseph Campbell, Chairman. This was advertised in the Whitman Hanson Express on Thursday, October 10th, 2024, and again on Thursday, October 17th, 2024. And 47 abutters were notified, and these are the abutters who are directly uh, along this project route. And to you, Mr. Chair. Okay. And I, I see we have two representatives from Verdanfis uh, here this evening. If you could introduce yourself, and uh, I'll turn it over to you to present. Good evening. Uh, Eric Denardo with Verdanfis. Roy Messing with Verdanfis. Excellent. Thank you. And I will go ahead and... Uh, Kind of walk through. So, since the last time we did the conceptual plans, um, essentially, uh, Verdantis personnel uh, conducted a site walk to essentially confirm whether or not the original concept plans match the actual site conditions. As you'll notice, and, and uh, Tony's aware as well, uh, we did end up cutting out a decent amount of the sidewalk improvements, essentially from zero, zero, uh, station zero plus zero, zero to about station five. Uh, the rationale behind that is as we walked the uh, you know, Main Street, not only were there uh, driveway openings, but also there were significant locations of open access to the neighboring facilities and the buildings in the area. So instead of us essentially blocking out and having to reduce down their, their parking, a uh, significant amount of parcels along that southern portion uh, essentially used the entire opening as parking. So that was the rationale for kind of limiting that, as well as as you move more towards Elm Street, you actually, there's no sidewalk there, so we didn't want to lead a sidewalk to nowhere. Um, so that was one of the rationale of the changes that we did. Um, we also, as requested uh, by the town, uh, changed the conceptual design to be an asphalt walkway uh, with granite curbing. Uh, the thought behind that is, Currently, a lot of the sidewalks that are currently constructed that will be replaced, they are you know, currently using asphalt with granite curbing. So we want to be consistent throughout the, uh, the proposed pedestrian improvements. There was also some significant uh, issues related to the access, essentially at, I want to say that's 26, station 26 on the southern side. Uh, there is an existing large facility that abuts the, uh, that abuts Main Street, and typically with an ADA compliant sidewalk, you need five feet. We don't have that without interfering into your right of way along Main Street. So as opposed to reducing down the, uh, the width of the travel paths, you've essentially eliminated that portion of the sidewalk. Um, there is existing uh, crosswalks in between. We are adding, uh, looking to add uh, some crosswalks to kind of connect the, the walkways across, um, as well as we limited, uh, tried to limit the number of uh, sidewalks that would cross, obviously, that main uh, train line, rail line going right through, um, just as a permanent headache. Uh, we don't really want to try to do that. Um, and yeah, I think for the most part, the next phase would obviously be once uh, the town kind of approves this, we move through to a 90% design, um, and then prepare details and notes and specifications related to the actual construction. Does the 
the board have any questions? Yeah, I do. I, I, I don't have my glasses on, so I apologize in advance. Um, is that the street to the um, to the right over there? Like, uh, somebody just had a thing on it. That's High Street. Okay. Yes, that is High Street. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I've noticed on Phillips Street, uh, there's a an emerging business there, and uh, this parking is limited. So I don't know if it's within the scope of this project. This is Phillips Street. Right? Yeah. So to the right of Phillips Street, uh, there's uh, knowledge to protect. I don't know what. Um, it just seems, um, you know, it, it's not very pedestrian friendly, and it's also not very business friendly for the business that's there because it, it limits their ability to, for parking and so forth. So I'm wondering if there's not something in that last 10% maybe you could consider uh, reconfiguring that a little bit because you have to put sidewalks in there anyway. Is that true? Well, so as of right now, so all the hatched areas are mm -hmm. the proposed sidewalks. Okay. We're actually not proposing any sidewalks there because there's actually an existing sidewalk right along that front portion of the property. Okay. And then we're not carrying the sidewalk, similar to what I said before, we're basically proposing the crosswalk so that we can essentially meet the two sides, the north and the southern side of the sidewalks, mm -hmm. but then we're not continuing it beyond that. So we can look to maybe better configure the existing sidewalk that's there, but we're not looking to limit any parking going to that facility or the building itself. Okay. okay. Well, I, you know, I wasn't concerned so much with you uh, limiting it further. I was hoping that we could go in the other direction. Okay. Where, you know, maybe the ballage could come out and, you know, uh, I know you can't move the fire hydrant, but uh, I, I wonder if it would make access into that site for that business a little better. Because, you know, we like to be positive with businesses yeah. that are trying to succeed, which they have been struggling a little bit. So I was hoping that maybe we could help them out somehow. Yeah, what we could do, you know, just because we want to make sure that we're giving access on both sides of the road. Sure. What we could do, because right now we're carrying that crosswalk going directly into what will be the front of that uh, that parcel. Maybe what we could do is look to relocate it and put it on the other side of Phillips so that we're not, because we don't want to promote crossing if there's no sidewalk on the other side. So sure. if we're going to remove yep. that sidewalk, we got to make sure we relocate that cross. So the problem as I see it, I don't mean to relitigate no, this no. whole thing, but is that, you know, uh, you've got a development uh, further, I guess, south, right? Uh, the two new buildings that are going up. And and, and also on Phillips Street, there's a uh, property up there. And also, um, you know, the housing authority is looking at developing a small parcel on Phillips Street as well. So I think the foot traffic <coughs> is going to increase significantly in that area. So, you know, I'm just hoping that we could take another look at that and make sure that, um, you know, that that's looked at. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yeah, Antoine. Uh, in front of that existing building, the old Ocean Spray, the one that's, what's the, what's the sidewalk width there now, approximately? Do you know, is it about, what, so three, three feet-ish? 18 inches. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right, about three feet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Basically, big white curb. Okay. It's under three feet because okay. three feet is the acceptable for you know okay. the variance related to ADA. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's something. I mean, I mean, I know they believe it's still up for sale, and if there's any development down there on that site, then we can always have the developer improve the sidewalks along that stretch of their frontage. They, they have to question. They have to be an ADA compliant, too, right? Mm -hmm. so exactly. Yeah. So you got to have it. What three feet? At a minimum, minimum thirty feet. Minimum. Yeah. Mr. Chair? Yep. Okay. And uh, on that specific piece of sidewalk being discussed right now, it's concrete. Uh, I can tell you experience we had there probably about five or six years ago. I was walking with another person. We were we had been hired by land planning to do some wetland work out back there. And that section of sidewalk, besides being very narrow, it strangely and inexplicably to me has periodically little ridges, like ribs that are raised that go perpendicular to the path of travel, such that the lady walking beside me tripped and fell and broke her nose. Oh my right there. And with a bleeding nose went to what used to be a sporting goods store there, got a little treatment and everything. It's right now it's not only inadequate, it's hazardous. <laughs> uh yeah, the strip hazards all along. So uh, whatever happens there can only hope for improvement. Uh, I do have a couple of quick questions. Um, it seems like What's being proposed that isn't there yet is is hatched fairly darkly. 
uh, it's not clear to me, does it, does this purport to show the existing sidewalk on the north side of Main Street, the one that goes in, uh, uh, in front of, I don't know what the street numbers are, uh, just above the 1000 building out towards Phillips Street, isn't there a sidewalk there? I'm straining to see the lines showing that on this side. Here. I see Phillips Street right there, but to the right, which is going to the east, where is the existing sidewalk? Is that demonstrated on here? Yes, it's not the hatch portion. So you see the... There's a very white section that's not, that it exists. Is that the sidewalk? Are you speaking to... I'm this speaking to what you're standing in front of. It goes all the way to, to uh, 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 across the street. Along the sidewalk here. Yep, yep, correct. So okay. this is not, the plan is not to replace that. Okay, it would be clearer if it showed more clearly what does exist. Okay. So it looks like we're trying to do complete street, which is sidewalks on both sides. Mm -hmm. Am I, well, we can. We can. Do that. And my next question, not to take up too much time, further to the west, if you scroll to the left, uh, there's the train station, keep going further. There's uh, the fuel place, etc. And then there is an undeveloped portion just before you get to 1202 Main Street. It's, it's after the filling station and the house. And um, can you talk to me about what's proposed? It looks like th there's an undeveloped parcel which I happen to own. There's about 150 feet of, of uh, frontage there. It's a wetland, mm -hmm. and it has a perennial stream going through it that goes straight towards our, our well field. Uh, you're going too far to the east, I don't know why. Uh, I'm just curious what is being proposed there, including the stormwater piece, uh, like, uh, are you designing catch basins into this, or is it too soon? There's no catch basins. There's no catch basins. Okay. Somewhere, Somewhere there will be, or there already are. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. The funding source, is my understanding, is strictly for the improvements related to the pedestrian walkways. Okay. And can you just go to this area he's talking yeah, about? Yeah, you keep going too far to the east. I want to so, go further to the west, but to be, to between uh, 1100 and 1202 Main Street. They're going east, they go west. They go west, young man. <laughs> there, there you go, this Charles Street coming in from the bottom. Directly, uh, so, yeah, if you hold right there, if you go up, I'm trying to see what the details are there. I can't read it from here, my eyesight. What does it say about that? What is the characteristics of that section? So the hatch there is basically we're just putting in a five foot wide asphalt wall. Okay, and the, yeah, as you said, there'll be a granite curb along the, the right. way of travel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how far up to they'll go all the way to Elm Street? This whole plan is this what we're being told tonight? There, well, essentially we're stopping. We and show that. No, it ends because of all the. What you'll notice is the properties to the north and south have existing curb cuts that they utilize for not only parking but access. So instead of trying to interfere with access to the property owners and the parcels in the area, mm -hmm. we've essentially ended the sidewalk. So it, it looks like there is a, uh, there's an industrial park there owned by Tracy White that uh, there's parking at the top there that's parallel to the street. It looks like it stops right across from that, right there, yeah. Yep. And, uh, okay. We're just just proposing a couple of handicapped ramps on the next intersection when something strikes in there. Okay. Even though there's no sidewalk on either side there, it's just pavement. Where there's pavement. The old, the old uh, pavement in front of that, that building parking. Yes. Right. Okay. Could you guys, on your next set, just designate proposed sidewalk, existing sidewalks yes. In, yes. in those areas? Yeah, I already made note of that. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> any other public uh, man from the back? Charlotte Basket, 1222 Main Street. Does this mean we're having sidewalks on both sides of the street? In portions, we're having sidewalks on both sides of the street, correct. So it means you will take parking on both sides? Everything, we're not taking any... It's narrow there. Yes, it is narrow there, but we are not requesting any property of any of the butters on either the north side or the south side, because these are already existing sidewalks that we're replacing for proportion. I don't have a sidewalk in front of my house. We're gonna, I'm sorry, we're proposing in some sections and we're replacing in others, but we're not interfering with the parcel lines. So can, can you, with it the right way. But, uh, can you just guys talk real quick about the, um, the, the, uh, the, 
And so I, I, I just wanted to join point out, I don't think they right, understand. If we could, uh, as everyone quiet down so we can hear John. I don't think people fully understand that the, the layout of the roadway is, goes 10 feet beyond uh, the edge of the road. So maybe if we explain that, they would understand it a little better. Yes, I'll, I'll plan on showing the limits of the right of way as a specific okay. line type, maybe well, like a red line on Well, this if you could just briefly explain it to the group yeah. here, because I don't think they understand that. Yeah. So, yeah, so we were always told that we could not have uh, yard sales because the street is too narrow. There's no room for cars to pull over uh, Correct. That's so they it's don't, very they don't break down about the, the edge of the pavement is not the property line. So the property line goes right. beyond the edge of the pavement. So from the edge of the pavement, Whatever that property line is, kind of basically that's going to be broken up a five foot sidewalk. Do you have an idea how much? Yeah, what is the width of the road layout? Yeah. The width varies. This roadway varies. Yeah, yeah. one part of 1222. That's your question. Right? That's the my yeah, question. Yeah, I, I don't know what that right now, top of my head, I would have to. We have cross sections on the plans that are spaced every 250 feet that shows the eastbound and westbound travel lane, as well as where we're taking or looking to propose mm -hmm. sidewalks. So if there's something specific related to a certain section, a uh, certain parcel, we can you know, look to include that in the cross sections as well. And Kevin, I have another quick yeah, question. John, so um, is the roadway as it exists, right, uh, already the correct size or the areas where it's too small? So I know you have a, 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 you know, a minimum uh, roadway width, right? Wait, so. Just so you know, this project, we're not we can, this is not a rolling reconstruction. Well, I, I understand okay. that. Yeah, this, yeah. This is so I, yeah. I guess my point is, you know, if, if the roadway is, is large enough, you know, it, the sidewalks could be brought out a little further. If it's mean, not into the road? Into the roadway, yes. So okay. I'm just asking that question because, you know, if people are concerned about, you know, the sidewalk encroaching on their property or anything like that, then if there's sufficient width of the roadway, then we could move it out a little bit. Because I know originally there, there was talk of, um, you know, traffic calming strategies for that roadway because it's a very busy area. So, um, you know, one of the best calming strategies to tighten the road up a little bit and make it more difficult for people to go fast down there and, you know, that might improve things quite a bit. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw that in there. My yeah, property at 1222, mm -hmm. it slopes down from the road. Mm -hmm. But the other side of the street, his yard, Goes up, right up from the road. About four feet back is from the beginning, comes right down to the side. My bill for my 10, 12, 29 Main Street. Probably at 1255 Main Street, you've got a bank about that high. It goes right down to the road. And they're going to. Oh, to make the question simpler, from the white fog line, how far in is the sidewalk going From the white fog line, in. How wide? How, how much? How, how, how far are they going from the white fog line? Five feet, right there. Five feet, right? Yes, five feet. Five feet, five feet. yep. Wow. And, and can you see the name for the record, sir? What? What? Sir? Excuse me. Sir, can you see the name for the record as well? Huh? Your, your name and address for the record. Uh, I, oh, Bill Fontaine, 1229 Main oh. Street, and I own a property at 1255 Main Street. Excellent, thank you. And uh, ma'am, do you have a question? I have Denise Ledbetter, 1263. Main Street. I don't have much frontage no. as it is, and then I have a circular drive. You come in, I'm right on that sidewalk. I've got no frontage left there. Another concern is the snow, snow removal. That's going to end up in my driveway. And then, did you say your name for the record? Denise Ledbetter. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, and your address? 1263 Main yeah. Street. Okay. Do you, you see that spot? Right there. Right here. Okay. It's 1263 Main Street. Did, did you guys have a comment to do that one? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're looking for public involvement as much as we can. These are 60% design plans. There's still a lot more to be permitted, as well as you know, public engagement to make sure that we're not taking anything away. The intent of this is to just provide increased pedestrian traffic along. So whatever info we can take on, whatever uh, discrepancies might, you know, be difficult for certain aspects of your property that you use or certain aspects of your frontage or grade changes. We did show, you know, that there is going to be, you know, a different grade change in certain areas. But again, these are 60% design plans. But 
we'll be continuing to reach out, uh, obviously work with the town to make sure that we can accommodate everyone. So I have a question. Yeah. Okay, sir. Joe Fonte, Foster. Even if they go in three feet, you're gonna have to move every utility pole on the south side? We've discussed, so we have the utility poles marked. The idea is that we would have to, uh, basically there's a requirement of 36 inches to be AD compliant walking by the utility pole. So for the majority of where we're proposing new sidewalks, we have that 36 uh, inch wide walkway. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hardy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, did anyone, hey, Mammy, you have a question? Mary Ryan, 1209 Street. I just question, you're going to get the white line. Not the white, so that's, I, I think the next phase of permitting will allow for us to, to really solidify where that is. We are not going anywhere beyond the right of way line, which is town owned. We're, we're basically providing five feet from the edge of the road. It's not the stripe. We're not taking away from the stripe. It's mm -hmm. it's offset from the stripe. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, well, five feet in, we could put up our, our fence along the road. So we'll lose that? Is that what it is? I think we would work with the town to make sure that we're not going to interfere too much with the public. I think that's yeah. the fair. Because we have a lot of problems with drainage because when we're down we're the bottom of the hill, so we had our firm put up very high, mm -hmm. and then we put the rock in. So we we're kind of, window. so we we're going to lose all that possibly. I think we would we would try to accommodate yeah. everything that you have. And, and the purpose of the public hearing is to get the community involvement and to hear from our dentist to to work with with everyone in town. Uh, yes, um, clearly, there's a lot of interest in the width of the roadway, not only the, the legal layout, but the, the travel lanes, et cetera. Uh, we see everywhere, and I'm sure the state laws are dictating this, more and more attention being paid to bike lanes. Um, I don't know if these gentlemen are responsible for anything except sidewalk planning. But uh, has, is anyone thinking at any level about how bicycles might safely travel through here? Or might be, it might be a, a difficult zone for those things. Given the nature of traffic, the tendency of the speed you see coming down that hill, and all the other factors. Just throwing that out on the table because we're talking about the street. And I know complete streets incorporate not only travel lanes in both directions for vehicles and sidewalks on both sides, but also uh, theoretically, bicycle lanes might be hard to achieve here, but this has nothing to do by members chair. Yeah, no. this is strictly for sidewalks. That's what this grant was for. Strictly for sidewalk improvements so that people could walk along the street. This has nothing to do with the the road. The road itself is actually was milled and overlaid by the state at no cost to the town, from uh, Montponset Street all the way out to Franklin Street. So when there's no change to the road, this is just adding sidewalks to make it safer so that folks are walking along Main Street, they can walk on a sidewalk versus walking in the street. There's no bike lanes, there's none of that. The Complete Streets is a completely different program and that's something that the town would have to apply for and get. And then that would be a, in essence a total reconfiguration of the road. That's not what this is. This is just strictly to get some safe passage for folks along Main Street so they don't get hit by a car if they're walking along the street. Okay. And maybe you can, uh, okay, go ahead, ask. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, okay, then in the back. Um, Charlotte back to 1222 Main Street. Um, my side of the road, yes, you could come over five feet from, you know, the, t if the town property is on. But on the other side, his lawn and my neighbor across the street, if you came over five feet, in the middle of their lawn, which is probably 20 feet from their house. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Okay. Is there the public comment? Are they able to submit their comments in writing just so we have the I, I, we can, we, It's being recorded so we can. I, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, for, see, uh, did you have one, one more comment? Yeah, I just wanted to know um, over where the cranberry, old cranberry factory. Uh, Whatever that, the Cranberry Yeah, over there. And you're talking about uh, the problem with the sidewalk. Does the town own any part 
like if you were, this is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So if you, it's Kathy Bernhardt, 66 Bonnie Holly, does the town own any of this? No. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, seeing, seeing no other comment, uh, we're going to be continuing. This, uh, this can either be continued to the 25th of November or the first meeting in December, which is uh, the 9th of December. Uh, I don't know if you need you'd like additional time or would you like to? Uh, one, one moment. Uh, for so what do you guys think? What date would you prefer? Uh, well, I, I know. I want to make sure. You want to be able to address these comments and course, update, yeah. update yes. a set of plans. Yes. So, so are you looking for the December 9th, right. the later one? I think that would be yes. yes. Why don't we tentatively go December 9th and then yes. see where you are? Okay. Okay. And uh, one one last comment before we uh, continue. Yeah, Sorry. That question. Do they have any idea at all when this project will be started or finished? It all comes down to, like anything else, funding. So this is the first step. Once we get a design, then Hanson could pursue grants for construction through various uh, different so organizations. Be a year from now? Yes, sir. It could be a year for now. There's no, there's no scheduling. It's, okay. it's tough to say. This is again. It's, it's. I've said before. It's step one of a hundred, and we're on step. We'll call it say twenty-five to get to that one hundred step, which is actually building the sidewalks. We still have a ways to go, you know. Okay. So just so people know, like one of the things that we've talked about in the past, and you know, if I'm the only one to talk about it, correct me. But um, the, the general idea was to be able to come from the train and have people walk down Main Street, right, and get out to the Burridge Pond area, and that's doable because uh, Crooker Place is uh, an entrance to uh, Burridge Pond, and once some land sales go through, that will be complete. And I think the Phil Bay Circuit Trail should be going through there at some point, right? It so, does now, but yeah. uh, it will be made more official yeah. uh, as we move yeah. in those directions. So, you know, I, I guess one of one of my goals and maybe others as well is to be able to make it easier. Like, you know, you live at 1200 on the other side. You could get on the sidewalk, take a walk down the street and end up at Burridge Pond without getting hit by a car. You know, that's the general idea. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but, you know, it would be nice to have a, a, a way to someone could from out of town could get off the train and walk out the barge pond without getting you know hit on the road out there so um, i think that's a good goal i don't know how the rest of you guys feel about that but you know yeah so uh well i'll entertain a motion to continue the public hearing to december 9th 2024. So, uh made by paul uh, seconded by Don Ellis. All in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Okay, 401. Tony? So, Mr. Chair, so yeah. what uh, What the planning board has done is they've continued the public hearing to December the 9th. Uh, again, if you follow our webpage, uh, we post our agenda. This will, gonna, this will give some time now for Verdantis to take in the, the comments that were offered by the public and try and address them, the comments. If they can address these comments by December the 9th, then we'll, they'll let us know and they'll, we'll have the hearing on that night. If for some reason they can't, we'll, we'll put a notice out um, through our webpage, social media. If you, we do have a sign-in sheet that's going around. If you put your name, if you have an email address that you're willing to share with us, we'll send you an email directly uh, and let you know what the status of the meeting is. We appreciate the public comment and for Dan Hicks for being here to answer questions. Yeah, we well, appreciate the comments. Yeah. Really, yeah. Helps yeah. us put these uh, yeah. together. Thanks, guys. Right. Thank no, you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for everyone. Thank you. Uh, give everyone a moment here. It's good to see you, though. As always, you, you guys are welcome to stay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone that would like, welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get squared away to not get out. Thank you. All right. The return ticket, if possible, to get like a more yeah, more than just a slight like rendering of what it might look like from two perspectives. And see if we draw that up. Because I think people are have trouble when they're looking at a set of plans like that. Understanding what's going on. Yeah, I can, uh, I can ask him. Don't take up your whole circle almost.
Yeah. Welcome to stay if you'd like. All right. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Time now being 7:51. I have. Uh, we have no appointments scheduled for this evening, so we're going to move on to board business. Uh, Board business. Uh, the first thing we have here is uh, zoning application review. First one uh, we have in our packet. If I may, Mr. Chair. Yep. Uh, Tony. So the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals is having a meeting on November the 19th, and these are three of the uh, applications that have put, been put before them. The first is for 620 uh, County Road, Map 81, Lot 2-1. Uh, application for a special permit filed under Section D1B of the Hanson Zoning Bylaw by Genevieve Joyce for the operation of a med spa named Rejoice Medical Aesthetics PLLC at 620 County Road. Um, so the application, there's not a lot to it. But this is the location at uh, County Road and High Street. There's that building in the uh, in the middle there, and so they're they're putting this business in. I'm not sure they marked it out in one of these units. Well, it's the bank. I mean, yeah, it's the old bank. It was the Coletta Cutler. Yeah. So, That's so in one of the units. Um, I, it's it's pretty much this is interior. The parking is existing, drainage is existing, septic's existing. Uh, anything with septic uh, would be handled by the Board of Health. Uh, anything as far as the parking, etc., it's all it's all already there. Uh, I suppose the zoning board, if they had any type of comments regarding site plan review, they would make that. Um, but it's just something that's this is all interior work. I think mostly. So can I just point out something real quick on this? And I think it's something that they should look at. But that's actually a condo. Um, yeah, those two buildings, and there's shared parking between mm -hmm. those two buildings. So I just wanted to point that they may may not be aware of that, but um, that's a condo situation. So so as, as well as the septic system. Is the concern if there's enough parking? Yeah, and that's definitely a concern because again, you know, uh, the the tenant on the other side or the owner. Could say I don't want people parking on this side, so you could lose a lot of parking. And, and I know um, events were held at that, that site, and um, parking was a challenge then. So I wonder, like putting a business in there, that's one of the reasons why the bank left, was because of the lack of parking. So if we can, uh, it's a it's a uh, Coletta Cutler. Okay. Yeah, the one on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the one on the top is the uh, Hanson Insurance. Okay, so if we could forward on to the ZBA uh, a concern for parking, Tony, on that. Okay, we'll do. Okay. Uh, any other concern on that? Okay. Let me uh, move on to the next one. Okay, moving on. So the second application is uh, application for a special permit filed under Section 6HB and Section 8D of the Hanson Zoning Bylaw by Caitlin Davies to allow the operation of a children's hair salon at 1375 Main Street, Units 1 and 2, Map 44, Lot 12. Uh, one second, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So that's just a configuring of an existing um, building, right? Yes. This, again, is it's an existing building. Parking is existing. There's four units. They're going to take two of the units for this business. Um, my understanding is that uh, this particular applicant, her specialty is uh, basically a hair salon for kids. Uh, so this is next to the hardware store, right? That's right. And you get that right? I believe so. Yes, on the side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the right side. And so while we're on the subject, there's plenty of parking already right now. Yeah, there's parking in the back as well. Parking in the back. Does this. Does this um, does this include the back portion of the building as well, or is it just the front? Well, it's you can drive around to the back, and it's well, it just says units, uh, units one and two. 
So how many, so how many pocket spaces are attached to those two units for their use, and is that sufficient? So that's the only question I would add. Okay. Comments? Parking? Sufficient parking? Okay. Yep. Uh, so what, once again, just making sure that there's enough um, parking uh, to support. And again, to the related to the parking, um, is there sufficient space for them to back around and, and drive out of that uh, parking lot rather than back out onto the road? That would be the other. Yeah, you could show that there's sufficient can, enough. You, yeah, I, the old convenience store there, you yeah. can go in and out for use room. There, there is a number, a limited amount of parking. Yeah, because you know, if you, the more business you put in there, uh, the more the less parking you've got. You know, so do, do you know if uh, the rear uh, continues completely in a circle. All no, it, it, it stops like, uh, yeah. like you can literally see the edge of that parking lot yeah. from the uh, Ace Hardware. So, no, it doesn't go around the building and out the other side. So, there's no opportunity to make it around one way. It, it drops off pretty deep, yeah. steep down there because those parking spots are actually for the, uh, the space underneath. And, uh, so, there's, a, there's build, you know, there's uh, units underneath. Basically. Yeah. Okay. I think. And the right. last application is an application for a special permit filed under Section B six F, Section eight D, and Section seven G one and two of the Hanson Zoning Bylaw by Cesar De Paulo to construct an eighty by sixty building for the storage of a concrete pump truck and trailer as part of an in home occupation. At zero Franklin Street, map ninety five, lot three. Um, one second, let me just question? let me just how pull you, up. How can you call a eighty by somewhat whatever size is eighty by seventy garage as um, a home based business? So that so so to, a little background on this. The this property is their property. The house is enhanced. Uh, sorry, the house is in Whitman. Mm -hmm. So the houses, they own two pieces of property okay. that abut each other. The house, the front portion, the address, oh, Whitman. I, I know where that is. The yeah. back portion yeah. is in Hanson. Okay. So this applicant had so come. By the railroad tracks? I don't mean that. Um, I don't think it's by the railroad tracks. It's no, further it's up the towards. Right so the Ridders Corner is, and, and, and it walks off like that. It's right in that area right in there. Right across from the golf course, right? It's going be East Bridgewater, isn't it? Uh, well, no, it's actually Whitman. Until you get up the roadways, you can see, like, when you get it over the line. Right there, yeah, right? like, the, real, the, the houses that are close to the railroad track are in Whitman, right? But then on the yeah. other side of the street is Hanson. Gotcha. It's weird the way the line goes. That's what they it's call like it Tritown. Yeah, it's exactly. Big yeah. Let's see if I can. Uh... So, for this application, while you're looking up, tell me, um, so do, I believe... do they have to get. CBA approval from Whitman and Hanson for this? I do not believe so. No. So what's the so this is the piece right here, I believe. Yeah, ninety four three. So this is where their house is. They have their property goes out to it's in Whitman and this is the rear portion. So this applicant had come in uh seeking to construct this garage and uh he sat down with myself, the building inspector and in the zoning department. And um you know, one question, you know, we immediately had uh, was, okay, you're, what this gentleman does for a living is he's a, he has a, a, a concrete truck. So that's what he does for a living. And he needs a place to put it. And so he wants to park it here. So one of the concerns we had it was, um, okay, uh, one of the concerns we had was, okay, you have one truck today. And then all of a sudden, there's two trucks tomorrow, and then three trucks. So how do we know that? And he's like, no, I just want to do one truck. So we actually asked him, well, are you willing to modify your garage so that the one bay is going to fit the truck? Because he has a certain size truck, and that's the only, that's only, it's only going to fit in that one bay. And he did. He, he, he's proposing a garage that's going to have one bay for one truck. And that's it. So that's sufficiently sized to fit the pump truck, but Correct. the other two bays of uh, whatever accoutrements he might have. Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. Right. Which, which side of the road? When you what do you mean the which side? On Franklin Street. 
he would be on the, we'll say, the Hanson side of the road. Okay, the right side then? Yeah. Oh, so, so that's where the jewelry maker is there. Oh, is that it's, well, it's a turf company now, right? Is he right I, I, that? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'm just trying to get my... It, it, is that ideas. beyond the... Uh, the uh, assisted living? Yes, it's right, it's right here, Don, if you look. It's going to be... So this is uh, Catherine Road? Catherine. Yeah, that's the high school. Ah, okay. That's the, I think yeah. you're totally wrong spot. So high school... Yeah. Catherine Road, and this is their piece that they own. Well, that's going to be an interesting meeting with all the abundance all over there. <laughs> well, one thing that we pointed out to them and we, we asked them is, you know, when they go before the, the, the zoning board is that, you know, clearly they take into the account the abutters and propose some type of screening, fencing, vegetation. So that's, that's the high school there. Correct. I didn't realize it went that far. <laughs> what, what is the more well, well, obvious is that a, no, I don't want to move 27, but is that part of Whitman, correct? That's is that his property as well? No. 8A? This is his parcel right here. This is his parcel right here. Uh, right. So that's enhancer. Yes, sir. Yep. That whole road was enhancer. Yeah, Catherine, Catherine Road was enhancer. Yeah. And boy, when they put the city surge in there, there was some, a lot of point and fingers and different situations because it, it dumps into Whitman's um, sewer system that goes through Whitman and Procter. Well, they can afford it. They keep taking money from us for the school, so, you know. <laughs> so, so, so the biggest question I have about this is, is it, the parcel is long and yes. narrow. Yes. Is enough um, setbacks? Yes. Uh, yes. came up with a bylaw that said that uh, no other towns can connect to their system. That's because of that street, Captain mm -hmm. White. Because it was a, a, the uh, guy that owned it was uh, big in Brockton. Um, and that's how he got it. So this, this applicant, you know, he, he's, he came in to see us. He's, he's willing to he modify his building so that, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's being straightforward, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's not to say that a later date in his, in his, if his, if he becomes a multi-millionaire concrete guy, I mean, will he expand that building? Maybe, but at that point, he's probably going to go somewhere else to a commercial industrial site because his business will get that much larger. But for right now, what he's doing, well, he could, you know, he he's entitled to do whatever fits in his own. Right, but he actually he he adjusted this garage so that it's he's showing that I'm gonna I'll do the one bay for the one. So I'm just so you know, I'm being legit with. One truck, you know. So can I ask you a quick question? Oh, Where is the house in relationship to this? Well, I don't think that showed on that. So that, the uh, house, because it's not. So yeah. It's, so the house is here. Oh, so the house is out on. on Whitman. Yeah, the house is out in Whitman. Okay. So that line where it says two A and the end of the road right there, that's Hanson, and just to the the left of that, that's Whitman. Correct. Okay. So you have to go cross through Whitman in order to get to Catherine Road. Correct. So his house is out in the front there? Right here. So how's he going to get a pump truck past the house? What's the width of the lot? Uh, there's, he's got the room. Oh, he does? Yeah, he does have the room to get through. So he's got a roadway that is sufficient? Yeah, there's a driveway in there. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't look like there's any wetlands, according to that. No, there's no wetlands. So what's a lot for? Yeah, I'll leave something there. Is that, a, is that a horse farm at uh, lot four? Lot four, I... The one you get, you get your thing on it right now. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just curious because uh, I used to work there at the uh, high school. Let's see. That's a pretty good size lot. Uh, it has an owner, Cyril Franklin Street, so it does have an owner. Well, there's a house in front of it in Whitman, too, right? Yeah. 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 Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I'll have to look at that because. I yeah. Because like <laughs> you, you know, you, well, can, I, uh, you can go around the high school, right? Well, it's, and there's a little roadway in the corner in that, and you can walk that whole property. There's, there's like little trails in there and stuff. I've actually been in there. Yeah, so I just didn't, have, like, didn't, didn't realize it until I saw it. Oh. All right. Well, I know this has not to do with this. Yeah. That's <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So, so no comments no comment on that. On that one, I guess is that finally good. Well, yeah. if you. 
feel comfortable with it. You feel like it's been. I, you know, it, he's going to be a, another business in town. He he came to us first. He changed his plan. So I think that shows a good, you know, that he's trying to be a good neighbor, good and say, you know, mm -hmm. and, and do it right. Yeah. Um, but he did put it on a buffer on that side. To the yeah, we made that, we made that, you know, clear to him. And, you know, he when he goes in, again, it was myself, uh, the building inspector and the zoning uh, admin. So we all sat down with him and explained, hey, you, you know, you need to buffer so that your neighbors, you know. Tax money. Yeah, and it's good, you know, trying to be a good neighbor, and they seem to be very willing to cooperate. So, yeah. you know, I thought that was a good thing. All right, um, moving on to town planner update, uh, housing production plan update is first. Uh, so I'm working uh, with our consultant on the housing production plan, and uh, she will be coming. We're setting it up so that on the 9th of December, which is the first planning board meeting, that that'll be presented to the planning board sort of, uh, we'll say, go live and tr and we'll set that up as a, a public hearing type scenario so that the public obviously can come in, make any, you know, voice concerns, comments or whatever, any other boards as well. Um, so we're working, I'm working with her on that. And can you send a letter to the CPC? Because yes, they're the ones that are funding it? Yep. So I invite them to that meeting? Absolutely. And we'll probably have to post for that because it depends on how many people show up, so. Yep. And are they going to present something at some point to the CPC? Yes, we can. I can tell her we can do that, or we can, or we can invite you to our meeting if the, if the boys might, willing to come. That might work better to just yeah. have everybody go to that meeting. Yeah. You know, and um, because I know, um, you know, they'll have a lot of questions. Sure. See, see people seem to be uh, concerned about how much it's costing and all kinds of things that people are asking. So. Yeah. I think it would be a good idea to clear the air on that one for them. Okay, yep. Um, uh, OCPC, Old Colony, Old Colony Planning Council Annual Summit? Yes, so um, give me one second on that. So the Old Colony Planning Council uh, has their yearly summit, which is taking place December 4th, 530 to 830. At Miraval Ballroom, 838 North Bedford Street in East Bridgewater. I know some members usually like to go to this. Uh, I have to RSVP by the 26th of November. So if there's any members that are interested in going, if you can please send me an email and I'll also contact the chair as well, seeing as how he's not here, uh, and put how many it's folks. It's good for, for us to show some support when you go in there. You know, that's why we've always, we've always yeah. gone. Uh, I haven't been to a store in. Is it email as well? It actually yes. is uh, yeah. a convenient place to go, uh, yeah. considering how large Old Colony uh, Planning Council covers, <laughs> that we're lucky that it's, it's been enhanced and, you know, this year it's been in East Bridgewater. Um, to be able to make it, it's pretty easy. Isn't that where the, um, that, what do you call it, the, God, um, I'm sorry. I've only oh, had, like last year. Was yeah, that, sleep, uh, last year was in Hanover. Um, was it last year? Yeah, it was yeah. in. Um, Say it The Mar 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 the Martini place that was up there. Is that where this is? I, no, that's on Route 18. Oh, okay. So I'm in the wrong spot. Thanks. But this is 838. That, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's that's Route 18. 18. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think oh, it. I think it is the old Mockingbird. That's the one. I'm yeah, on. I think it is the old Mockingbird. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they turned it into a ballroom, and they don't they don't serve like uh, lunch and dinner anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'll send this to you in an email. Let me know if you want to go. That way, I can get a head count, um, and uh, and I can I, I'll respond to them. Okay, and uh, we can wait on invoices for the next minute, maybe. Um, I, I'd l if you don't mind. Uh, I mean, I, you as vice chair, you can you can sign. Okay. So okay, I'm happy to sign. Um, what, what are the? Invoices? We have two invoices. Uh, one is for sixteen dollars and five cents, and that is for. Um, you know, I'm sorry not to interrupt you, but it was my understanding that um, Joe Campbell was voted as the person who could sign those, and not the vice chair. Okay. So I think we should have an overall vote of that. Does that make sense? If you to protect you and the rest of us. Yeah, I mean, 
I That's fine. I, I think it was voted as such specifically for Joe Campbell. To I, I, sign I, I, it and then not the as the yeah. designated chair of whatever meeting, right? No, I think it was, I think it was, I think it was for the chair. Yeah. Yeah. To sign yeah. So he's not here, so uh, the okay. vice chair. Okay. Yeah, I just thought hey, I'd, you is know. that the only like, okay. there's, there's two invoices. Oh. If you're not comfortable signing oh, it, we'll move. I'm, I'm comfortable. Oh, we can we, I, we can vote. To, I think if we're going on to vote, I'm just saying just I'm for this. Right. I'm saying yeah. let's all vote this one because yeah. this, this evening because it's not clear whether you yeah. would allow that to anyone else oh, to yeah. sign it. Fine, yeah. Would you like yeah. to take a vote to authorize Kevin as acting chair this evening to sign the two invoices? Would that so be? Moved. Okay, uh, motion by <laughs> John, and second by Paul. Uh, all in favor of that. Aye. Nobody's voting. <laughs> Aye. Okay, and I assume I can vote as well. So, four zero one in favor of me signing tonight's invoices. Um, and the second invoice was. So the first invoice uh, is going to be for sixteen dollars and five cents, and what that is for is, um, I ordered the. Uh, Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised 12th edition. So that is in the office. How much is that? That was uh, $9.06. Oh, that's not too bad. And then when you tack on taxes, <laughs> when you tack on oh. taxes, it was $16.05. <laughs> uh, the, second, the second invoice is for $180. And what that is for is for the Whitman Hansen Express for the public hearing notices. So you can get Robert's Rules for 10 bucks, huh? Do you like me to print next to it as well? Please. Yeah. So and here's the second. Is that open source on Google too? Mm -hmm. It Google is. Docs? Really? It is. Because yeah. yeah. I tried looking. Would it? Yeah. So I figured, you know what? We'll just have uh, because you, the board will say officially adopted Robert's rules. So I figured mm -hmm. we should have a copy mm -hmm. in, in the office. Yeah. Anyone, anyone should have it the desk? <laughs> well. I forgot to bring it down, but I was—I I am going to bring it. There you go. I did forget to bring it. You never know. Some of them might have a question. Exactly. You're exactly right. Uh, uh, CBA decision 410 Woodbine Ave. Yeah, the last uh, at the last hearing there had been an uh, an ask basically to results of some of the ZBA uh, applications that have, have that the planning board has sort of taken a look at. So 410 Woodbine, which was for a application for special permit under MGL Chapter 40A in Town of Hanson Zoning Bylaw Section B6GN Section 8D. Is that the one you showed us at a previous meeting? Yes. Somewhat recently? Yes, and it was for an in-law apartment. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the ZBA had a hearing date of September 24th, 2024, and they voted unanimously to uh, approve that special and grant that special permit. So I just wanted to give you the what the results were with that. So isn't that the one that like uh, there's a question of whether the house was built on someone else's property? The Is house does encroach. The, the house does encroach onto town owned so property. So how can the ZBA approve something that they don't have the right to? They did. <laughs> so um, doesn't make any sense. So we we did have a comment from the review on that yeah. stuff. So. I mean, you know, how can the ZBA vote to approve something on? Uh, town owned property without the owner's permission. I'm just, just saying. I mean, you, you're the selectman, right? So uh, mm -hmm. let me ask you that question. What your thoughts? Okay, I'm actually on the ZBA, I think. Oh, yeah? Did you, did you, <laughs> were you part of that vote? He was. Yes. Yeah? Um, I went based on what they had suggested that I, you know, but what was the question? I didn't hear the so, question. So my question, my question is, is um, this project yeah. right is on um, partially on town-owned land, so because it her... approved right. So the, the the house was built on encroached on town property, right? right? So they're asking to have an addition built or you know expand that site, right? Yeah. But they're actually expanding it onto town-owned property. So the ZBA is actually voted to approve a project that would encroach on town-owned property without the town's permission. Are they building? They were they were going up. It's it built up. already. Yeah, but they're going up. But my point is, like, how can you approve something, right, that's actually not on that person's property? It's actually town-owned. 
I believe I, I think you would you guys know should better. Take it's not look at this because what is yeah, it? I said I think you guys should take another look at it because the reality is is they've approved a project on a, a piece of town-owned property without the town's permission. I mean that, that's like a lawsuit waiting to happen. It's ridiculous, actually. <laughs> but anyway, is the addition? Yeah. Why would I thought the addition was? Is it being built or it was already built? believe it's already in place. It's already built. I believe it's already it's not a, Yeah, but not, it's not grandfathered. So the point is, is if you've got a piece of a, a, a lot, right, yeah. that's non-conforming, right? Mm -hmm. So that whole lot's non-conforming because a portion of it is on town-owned property. Correct. So if you try and approve something uh, on, a, um, on that lot, I don't see how they could do it. Well, so no, I would like them the, to build. Mm. Mm. You're missing my it's, point. It's though. the definition of the... In, is that what it is? This is what well, the definition I of the MLR. Well, power. I suppose, uh, yeah, well, I suppose one question is, was town council there? Yes. And did he advise? I believe he advised to. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so oh, the next, God. so the, uh, the next tentative meeting is November the 25th. Now that is the week of Thanksgiving, so we'll try and keep the meeting short. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, Thanksgiving except Thursday after that meeting. Um, I'll let you turn motion to approve the next uh, planning board meeting for November twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. So, uh, wait a second. You're saying that's November twenty fifth? November. Oh, I'm sorry. November twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. Did I say a different day? Please. Yeah. So our next our next meeting is November twenty fifth. The reason being is Veterans Day falls on the second uh, Monday. Because yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to come here for any holidays. It's all on. No, 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 no. So <laughs> because, so this particular year in October, Columbus Day falls on the second Monday mm -hmm. and Veterans Day falls on the second Monday in November. Right. So that's why it goes to the 25th. Okay, motion made by Paul, seconded by uh, John. Uh, all in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Uh, four, zero, one. In favor of uh, November 26th. Usually it's the committee. Uh, what? The uh, committee is always on the um, motion to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. Um, uh, second by Don. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 401. We are adjourned. At 819. 819.